Hello, everyone. Welcome on back. It's been a weekly game bet match. It's the number one tennis betting podcast and YouTube show with myself, Nigel Seeley, and our senior HP Tour handicapper. It's Sean Calvert. Good afternoon to you, Sean. Uh, busy morning for you. Saturday morning. We don't usually do a Saturday, but it is Wimbledon fortnight. And yeah. uh, the, young, the young lad done well. He got to the final of the football tournament this morning. Brilliant news. Oh. Unbelievable, Jeff. Absolutely unbelievable. I, I left the house at, what, eight o'clock this morning? Just got back. It's now quarter past four in the afternoon. Yeah, Leggins' team got to the, all the way to the final. They lost on penalties in the final. Amazing, really. They, they, they had some really good teams in that group. So they, I didn't, wasn't confident they were going to get out of the group, to be honest. But they, they did. And they, they scored five out of five penalties in the semifinal. The, the semifinal shootout in, in, the, in the semis, they scored five out of five. And then there was another set, uh, penalty shootout in the final, which they only scored one, I think. But it was a real nervy one. There was people in the crossbar. It was, there was balls flying all over the place. And I think, I think it was 2-1 in the end. They lost on penalties. But yeah, brilliant. I mean, I'm a bit sunburnt, uh, a little bit flustered because I've just got back here and looking at the tennis and the markets. But um, yeah, really proud of him. He's done really well. His team have done so well today. How is he? Is he feeling proud? Is he a bit disappointed he lost in the final? Oh, he's, he's like me. He's, he's, he's thinking, well... Yeah, I did all right to get to the final, but you know, I lost the final. League. They all trooped off like they'd they'd lost the World Cup final. It was um, it was quite sad actually. But um, yeah, that's, they're kids, aren't they? You know, even even you and I, you know, we're still competitive, aren't we? You know, if we had a, imagine if we had an over forty fives football or something, and you missed a penalty in the final, you'd you'd be gutted, wouldn't you? So yeah, he's come off he's come off a little bit disappointed, but he's gone straight on Fortnite. So no, that's <laughs> I don't right. think he's that I, bad. I, I, I've missed. I've, I've took two penalties. This is true. I, I used to play quite a decent standard of football when I was younger. Believe it or not, I did. And yeah, I played better in two. Than me. I played in two cup finals, and both of them went. One of them for Carl Shorten Football Club that, uh, under the lights on a Tuesday night. Went to a, it was like a Surrey Cup match, and I went to a penalty shoot, and I took penalties in both of them, and I missed them both in both two cup finals. I missed the penalty in both. No, no. Did you miss the target or was it the keeper? I put one over and one wide. One, one to the left of the keeper who missed it, and then anyway, so anyway, we can we can reminisce about these glory days of sport and action. If you want to do penalty shootouts, the Euro twenty twenty four actually reach the knockout stage, and there's going to be a whole host of drama there. Lots of penalty shootouts in that one as well. Make sure you follow a bit of weekly studios for all the content of Euro twenty twenty four as well, all the way through to the final. But only not only is Euro twenty twenty four on; it's obviously Wimbledon fortnight as well. And if you haven't seen the future show with myself and Sean, and also the WTA show with Roy Girardi. We've gone through the draw. We've given you our thoughts on the process of who's going to win it. We've looked for the fades. We've looked for the players who we think will are going to win the tournament at big, big prices. We've looked at the bracket as well, and we've given you the advantages and disadvantages. And now it's time for the match bets. Now, each week, we have you bets on the match betting uh, throughout the ATP Tour season, but this is the big one. This is Wimbledon. This is where a lot of people come to play bets, place bets for the very first time. And welcome along if you're new. And if you're betting with Bet Rivers, uh, I promise you, you will not see a better array of tennis betting markets anywhere else stateside than what is off on offer on the Bet Rivers app. Uh, there'll be probably 45 different markets available in all the different matches uh, throughout the first round. And when we get to the final, we'll get 60, 70 matches. And remember, if you do bet with Bet Rivers, you'll be able to watch Bet, uh, bet Live and Watch Live. So all the way through the match, you place about on the Bet Rivers app and you'll be able to watch all the action for you on the Bet Rivers app. Now, there is a whole host of markets, as I said, 64 men's matches, 64 women's markets, 37 different markets for some of these matches. So it's very, very, it's a minefield to go through them all. And the man who's done all the work for us, and you don't have to, and watch your son get to a final today, is Sean Calvert. Now, Sean, you've pinpointed five matches that we need to look at uh, for the first round in the men's draw. Yep. If you are looking at this uh, for the first time, people are obviously watching the show for the first time, people bet on Wimbledon for the first time in tennis. What 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 is the key thing here? I mean, gra people who've got good records on grass, you know, it's a, it's a surface that takes a bit of getting used to. What yep. do you look for, first of all, when you're looking at the first round at Wimbledon? Well, you've got to be a little bit careful because I've said before, I say it before every Grand Slam, it's not the best time to be back in underdogs generally. What I normally do is back underdogs. I, I try and be a little more circumspect in Grand Slams, go for slightly different bets, maybe plus one and a half sets or overs or whatever, because 20, only 25% of underdogs generally win at a Grand Slam. It's even less in the French. Um, Wimbledon, it is about 25%. So just be a little bit careful. The first thing I always say as well about Grand Slams, don't be diving in because it's tempting. Even for me, I've done this for years and years and years. I've seen 64 matches. I'm thinking, well, he's a bit short. He's a bit short. And then before you know it, you've had about 30 bets and everything's gone out of control. Um, 
so just just be a little bit circumspect on your bets. Don't don't go mad in the first the first couple of days. Um, but as far as players are concerned, we're going to talk about one in a minute um, that doesn't have a particularly good record on grass. Yeah, Wimbledon is is a little bit special. It's a little bit different. Um, obviously, grass courts a lot of players they don't like it. They don't fancy it. Um, we're going to talk about one of them in a minute. So yeah, good records on grass helps. It is a little bit slower Wimbledon these days than it used to be. I don't think it's quite as important as it used to be. You know, we've seen Carlos Alcaraz last year come from the French Open, barely played a tournament on grass, won Queens, won Wimbledon. You know, you would that that would be unheard of, wouldn't it? Twenty years ago, it, it just wouldn't happen because the grass was so much quicker. So it is a lot slower now the grass. So you you just have to be a little bit, a little bit careful. A great grass record is good, but it's not it's not quite as important as it used to be in the old days. I think. Yeah, good play today. I mean, a lot of players that I used to bet. I mean, you could pick three or four. Some of the Brits used to be really good at big prices. Some of the South Americans coming over here never used to. I remember famously the quote. Well, who was it? Was it? Who was it? Was it one of the players said grass. Was it Nadal? Was it? I think it was, it was Marcelo Rios, wasn't it? Marcelo Rios, gra- grass. I think cows. That's what he said. Yeah, I think it was them. I'm not sure. Davidenko was another one. Absolutely hated it. Um, there were loads. I think it's a bit different now because back then it was so quick. Mm-hmm. They just didn't. They, they just. I mean, the likes of Rios. They they didn't have a chance, did they? And they just thought this isn't this isn't proper tennis. This is just mucking around for a few weeks. So they they weren't yeah. interested. I think, and that's another reason why Wimbledon's consciously. It's not an accident. They've consciously slowed it down over the recent years because they they wanted to get away from that six seven seven six six seven seven six twenty two twenty stuff that used to happen all the time. They they wanted less of that. Um. So they they slowed it down to so that it would be. In theory, there'd be fewer tie breaks. Yep, let's move on to the matches. This is it. That's what you come here for. The betting uh, and the tips. And the first match we are going to discuss is that man, and I believe, who not hasn't got a very good record at Wimbledon. He's got an awful record on clay, but he's a heavy favourite tomorrow. It's Casper Ruud. He's the world number eight. He's the number eight seed. He's up against the Australian Alex Bolt. Um, Ruud is minus 375 here, which I find... Absolutely staggering, given his record on the grass. Alex Bolt is plus 285, the Aussie. The spread here is four and a half, with Bolt at even money, plus four and a half. And the under the total is 39 and a half, with over uh, minus 110, under minus 114. These two players have never met before, and obviously there's a huge gulf in the uh, in the quality of matches they've been playing. But Casper is a clay court through and through. His record on grass, is, like I said, is absolutely abysmal uh, in his career. And you look at Bolt this year, he's played 20 matches on grass, obviously all in, in a lot much lower calibre than what he's playing here. And he's won 18 of them and only lost two. Now, Casper is going to be in a lot of people's parlays because, as I said, you know, Wimbledon comes around and people just see the seeds and see the heavy favourites and put them in parlays. But minus 375 for a player, let me give you his grass court record. His grass court record is five wins from 13. I think that is... Uh, this, I, this, this is this to me. Whichever angle we attack here, this looks like a great value of play here. On my personal opinion, is to, is to oppose Rude in some capacity. Yeah, I mean, he's a throwback, really, to the Marcelo Rios years, isn't he? Well, he has been so yeah. far. It can change, you know. Sometimes when they've done it two or three times and they're bored or get losing in the first round, second round, they they really knuckle down and try and get the grass. I'm not sure Casper Rude's done that yet. He may do it this year. As far as I know, he's not played any grass court preparation for this. He certainly didn't play a tournament. He may have had a knock-up at Hurlingham or somewhere like that. Uh, the Boodles or somewhere that these guys play the sort of private club matches. Um, I'm not even sure he's done that, to be honest. As you said, his grass record, I've got it slightly different. I've got 4-7 win-loss, Casper uh, Maybe that's main level. Um, yeah. But he's lost to a, he lost to a left-hander here last year, Liam Brody, hardly the most illustrious of left handers mm-hmm. and Brody himself doesn't have a particularly good record. In fact, it's a, a poor record on Grassley and Brody. Um, Brody beat him last year. Uh, he also lost to Ryan Penniston on grass, did uh, did Casper Rude, and he just about scraped past Albert Ramos, who himself w- wouldn't be particularly interested in playing on grass. First couple of sets were tie breaks of that match, if I remember rightly, Rude against Ramos. So his all time main level grass court. Uh, Record 40% win rate and a service points one and return points one total of 100. Not completely disastrous, but not befitting of a world number eight. And those stats are well, well down on his clay numbers. You know, he's miles ahead of that um, service points one and return points one total on clay. As you said, Bolt is extremely experienced on on grass. He's played over 100 career matches on this surface 
Okay, some of them, but most of them were at lower levels, but he knows his way around a grass court more than pretty much anybody in this tournament. Played a five-set epic against Leandro Raidi to qualify. I think he, he one of his quotes was, um, he basically said, I'm sort of playing with house money now. I've got absolutely nothing to lose. Uh, probably shouldn't have won that match. I think it was a match earlier in the qualities that he struggled in as well, but he's got through that epic against Raidi. Obviously more comfortable on the grass than Casper Ruud is. The big question is how how well has Ruud actually prepared for this? I, I suspect he's not done that much. You've got to remember that Casper Ruud puts a great store in the clay swing, doesn't he? You know, that's his time of year from sort of April to to sort of end of May, June. That's that's his time of year. He's going to be tired. He's not. It's not surprising that he looks at this calendar and says, well, where can I take some time off? Well, just after the French Open would be great because I'm not interested in the grass. He may have. He may come here with a different attitude this year. I don't know, but some way siding with Bolt has got to be the bet here, hasn't it? I, I've plumped mm. for Bolt to win the opening set plus one seventy five. You know, he's the one that's been playing on grass. He's the one that's more comfortable on it anyway. But certainly, in recent you know weeks, he's been playing on it a lot. Rude is coming here about as cold as you can possibly get. So. I've gone for the quick kill. It's either a quick win or a quick loss here. Plus, uh, plus one seventy five for Bet Rivers on Bolt to win the first set. There's plenty of other options you could take. Uh, plus one and a half sets on Bolt is plus one thirty eight, two point three eight. That means Bolt's got to win two sets. Um, you could take that as well. well I suspect this is going to be a, a competitive match, more competitive than it would be on on another surface. I think that's for sure. Yeah, Sean is taking uh, Bolt to come flying out the traps like his name say Usain Bolt and win. Set yes. number one here at plus one seventy five. I actually like Bolt in the money line, Sean. I think I I, I think minus three. That's the braver but, option. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I think we, I'm going to go because I, I just think I mean sorry, I think it's the wrong price. And the other thing, what you said there about the clay court season, rude has got the Olympics. I mean, that's going to be that's going to be Is high high up. I'm, I'm sure he, I'm sure he's playing. I don't know. To be honest, I, I hadn't looked I, that far ahead. Um, but I mean, I don't know if he's playing. I mean, I'm sure he, I'm sure he'll be playing. Well, I'll find out while we're doing this. But I, I just think that that must be a uh, that must be if he if he is anyway, and that be his priority here rather yeah. than that. Why? Play, I don't yeah. see why wouldn't why wouldn't he go to the Olympics? I mean, it's on Roland Garros. I, I, I haven't seen, I haven't looked at the, the official. I imagine he probably is. I'd be surprised. I, yeah, I, I haven't looked at it, but I, I imagine he probably is. And if if it's it's a good point you make, if that's correct, because they're obviously playing on clay um, yeah. at, at the Olympics, so. For him, the obvious downtime in his in, in what's always a busy season, it's, it's got to be the grass swing, hasn't it? He hasn't bothered playing. Any, yeah, he hasn't bothered playing any warm up tournaments. He might have had a knock up at Hurlingham, but <coughs> yeah, we'll see how he goes. I mean, obviously, Bolt isn't isn't the the best quality in the world in, in terms of um you know in terms of top ten, top twenty class. But as I said, he knows his way around a grass court. And if 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 Rude is not up for this or not you know fully focused, then then Bolt's got every chance. I would suggest. Yep. So we're going to go for Rip Bolt to uh, to win this year. The Aussie, big serving Aussie, great record on grass. We're going to post Cash Brood. Head across to the Betrooms website. 38 different markets available in this match currently. It starts at 6 a.m. on Monday. So a nice early start. And remember, if you do have a bet on the Bet Rivers app, you can bet live and watch live with Bet Rivers. There will be a whole host of specials as well, uh, which will be notifying you of as the tournament goes on, available exclusively on Bet Rivers. But that's the first match we were speaking in. The first match we believe there could be a shot. Uh, the next match, uh, Ben Shelton, who's been in pretty poor form on the grass court. We've spoken about him many times on the show. He's up against uh, Matei Bellucci. Uh, ben Shelton is minus 315. Bellucci is plus 240. The spread here is four and a half, very similar to Rice's to the Rude match. Shelton minus four and a half is plus 112. Bellucci giving up four and a half, sorry, receiving four and a half is minus 143. And the total here is a very, very, very high. 41 and a half with over minus 114, under minus 110. They're both big servers. Shelton was shocked by uh, Jubb, the, the British player, in the semi finals in Mallorca. That was a big, big shock there. He's lost three of his uh, last five, sorry, three of his, three of his last four uh, grass court matches. Belushi's come through qualifying. He hasn't really beat him too much, but he did beat David Goffin in the final round of qualifying. And Shelton is not playing at all well. So this could be an interesting one as well. Yeah, I hope you weren't going to mention Mallorca because I'm I'm really angry with myself because I, I talked about Tabolo, didn't I? He's won the tournament. Yeah. I went with I talked about Tabolo as a possible uh outright. It's always the same, isn't it? When you've got a couple that you think about and then you just think, well, actually, no, I'll go with the other one, and the other one wins the tournament. There you go. These things happen. Um as far as Ben Shelton's concerned, I, I'm not sure he's fully fit, you know. 
You know, I've seen him a few times this grass swing. He had another. He had a medical timeout again on his serving arm, which for him is obviously his left arm against against Paul Job, and he only won an average of sixty six percent of his first serve points in Mallorca. Did Ben Shelton, and that's that's way down on, on what he would normally expect to, to achieve. It's not like he you know he played Hijikata, um, Hijikata and Ju- and Job. You know, it's it, it just it just worries me. It doesn't look like he's in a good place. It's, I suspect it's physical because he's had this left arm problem before. Whatever the reason, whether it's just he hasn't taken to grass, I don't know. The reality is he's three and six win loss on grass. Uh, all his matches have been at main level on grass, and he's only broken serve eleven percent of the time, winning just thirty three percent of return points. So he's doing nothing on return. He's not serving that well at the minute. I suspect, as I said, he's injured. Uh, or certainly seems to be slightly injured. Now, Bellucci is a player that he does prefer the quicker surfaces. He's not he's not overly keen on clay. He said it before. Uh, and he's qualified really well. It beat David Goffin in in four sets. Okay, the earlier matches were a little bit easier, but you know, Goffin's been playing well. It's it's you know, he's a former quarterfinalist semi-finals, I think, Goffin here at Wimbledon. He's he can play on grass. Certainly can. Um Bellucci should also have beaten Nakashima at the Surbiton Surbiton Challenger. He had three match points. In that match, so should have beaten Nakashima, who's a decent grass court player as well. Made the semi-finals in Nottingham on grass as well. Did Bellucci? So you could certainly argue that he's the one more in tune with this surface than Shelton is. The fact that this line is so high, forty-one and a half or whatever it is, that that tells you that this is likely to be a long match. We, I've just told you that Shelton only breaks breaks serve eleven percent of the time on grass. Bellucci's been serving well. I'm taking over nineteen and a half player games here with. Uh, Bellucci at uh, 1.87 minus 115. That is with Bet Rivers. The only way this could go badly wrong if 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 you're a Bellucci backer is if he wins in straight sets, something like 6-3, 6-4, 6-2 or, so, or whatever, um, which is pretty unlikely given that it's Ben Shelton. So over 19 and a half player games, I'm, there's plenty of other options to get with Bellucci. Um, sometimes I don't make the right decisions when I'm when I'm making these conclusions, but that's the one I'm going with here. Over 19 and a half games. Uh, Bellucci's got to win 20 games in the match, basically. This match starts on Tuesday, so we don't know the order play yet. But you can get all the prices available now with Bet Rivers. And obviously, as the day continues, tomorrow on Sunday, there'll be more markets added to the array of markets currently. But this match is Tuesday. Uh, check the Bet Rivers app early uh, to see what time when the order play comes out. But at the moment, we only know the order play for Monday, day one of Wimbledon. Day two of Wimbledon, we'll know that a little bit later on as the tournament goes on. But it's a Tuesday match, that one. So you've got a little bit more time than the opening match to get involved in that match. The next match we are going to discuss halfway through the five bets uh, is also on Tuesday. And this one is a battle between two very big servers, uh, Quintin Hallis uh, against uh, Christopher Eubanks. And Hallis did well uh, last year, got to the third round of Wimbledon, gave Sinner a bit of a fright. He's up against Christopher Eubanks, obviously a, a very popular tennis player who's done well at Wimbledon last year, but his form coming into this season has been not good at all. And he's got a lot of points to defend. He didn't play, play, play very well at Mallorca where he won the title previously. He did well at Wimbledon, so he's got a real lot of pressure on the American here. He's just hanging on to the favourites in this match, minus 121. Halis is minus 103. The spread here is one and a half, but again, when you've got a close match like that where the Bet Rivers can't split the two, the, the, the spread is pretty irrelevant. But if you want to go for Halis or, or on the spread, you can go for a bigger or smaller line uh, using the toggle on the website. And this is the interesting one for me. This is the one that's really interesting. The total games here are pitched at a massive 44 and a half with over minus 105, under minus 122. I don't think I can remember a first-round match at Wimbledon ever been 44 and a half. I can remember quarterfinals and semifinals touching 43 and 44, but I don't think I've ever seen a first-round match being as high as this, and it's not as fast as it used to be. Um, my it's high, that is, isn't first, it? My, my first reaction, I've got to go under, just because I, it's, it's, a, it's a very big high. But we do know these two suited to grass. We do know that Halis is in good form, come through three qualifying. Uh, Eubanks isn't in good form, only won two of his last 10 matches on all surfaces. And, you know, he, he looks a man struggling for confidence at the moment. He does. He looks under, whether it's under pressure or whether he's carrying an injury or what, I don't know. He was terrible in, in Mallorca that match. I, I suffered all three sets of um, Eubanks against Mensik. Mensik had only played two career matches on on grass before that day. And he, he was well, well ahead of, of Eubanks. It just feels like two players heading into this Wimbledon with very different moods. 
I mean, this is where it all started to go a bit wrong for Quentin Hallis last year. It, it played really well to make the last 32, um, as you said, last year at Wimbledon. And he took the opening set off Sinner. It, he was injured that day as well. I think he had a strapping on his knee that day. And for me, he's not he's not been fully fit since Hallis, it, which is a shame because he was playing some really good tennis about a year ago. Um, he's qualified here. And what I liked about that was the, what he said afterwards, which was, and I quote, my level of play is really good. It's been a long time since I felt this good. And I think that's, he's talking about his body there, which has certainly let him down over the last sort of year or so. Uh, as I said, Q-Banks, Q, uh, Q-Banks, it looks like <laughs> he's playing, who's Q-Banks? He's playing under <laughs> a lot of pressure, uh, defending all the points he won last year. I don't know if it's that, that's just my take on it. He was, he, But he was so poor against Mensik that nothing was working for him. The serve wasn't particularly good. He wasn't hitting his spots on serve. He wasn't, hardly getting any free points. The backhand, which has always been his weakness, was was dreadful. The, the slices, you know, they were going longer into the net. The vo backhand volleys, he missed a ton of them as well. He just looks like a player who's, who's low on confidence. Um, and if you look at the all-time main level grass stats, Halis is, is some way ahead. Um, he's got a good record on grass. It does suit his big game, um, Quentin Halis. Service points, one and return points, one total of 104. And a service hold and break total of 108. That is a very, very impressive stats on grass indeed for a guy who was underdog to beat Eubanks. And Eubanks' stats for the record are 100 and 100. And and even another point about those stats of Halise is that he's he's only faced top 100 opposition on grass at main level. So he hasn't been playing poor players. He's played the likes of Sinner, Dan Evans, Vukic, Popirin, Rusevori, Basilashvili all top 100 players that he's played, and he's got those stats that I've just mentioned. So I think he's decent value as an underdog. It's not that it's not that easy to find good value underdog potential winners at a, at a slam. Um, and Halis, I think, is one here. Minus 102, Bet Rivers, 1.98. 1.98, Halis. He's a man in form. Eubanks, obviously, under huge, huge pressure to, to do well in this match. And uh, I quite like that as well. I, I wouldn't bet Eubanks with anyone's money. I, it's going to be bet because he's a likeable guy. He's an American guy. And everyone remembers what happened last year. And you tend to find that a lot of people come to Wimbledon and only see tennis at Wimbledon last year. And they'll look at this match and think, how can this guy be the price he is? And sometimes people fall into that trap and don't watch his show regularly. So I think this guy's under, under a bit of pressure here and he's not playing well, as Sean alluded to there. OK, the next match is a very one-sided affair. Holger Roon, he got to the quarterfinals last year. Surprisingly, really, because he's more of a clay court player. He's up against Quan. Um, the American is a decent enough player. Uh, minus 2,000 for Rune, plus 1050 for Quan. The handicap here is eight and a half, uh, and the total games line is pitched at a very low compared to the other matches, 30 and a half, with over even money and under minus 136. I mean, I was surprised last year that uh, he reached the quarterfinals, Holger Rune. I mean, and, and what we've seen this year, he's not playing anywhere near his best. Quan himself isn't in great form coming into this tournament. Got beat by uh, Sebastian Corder at the French Open in their last match they played. But should the games be 30 and a half? This should should Rune be an eight and a half game favourite? I'm oh, no. really shocked. That, that, that's 15, 15 more games, 14 and a half more games, less games than Eubanks v. I, 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 Halis. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. No, it's, it's to do with Quan's injury record. I mean, he's a really good player soon with Quan. He's beaten Rune twice, uh, both occasions they've met. Yeah, I'll come on to that in a minute because there was a there is a caveat on that. Um, but I'll come on to that in a minute. It, there's there's no there's no statistical basis really for making him this short. Yes, he should be a favourite, but probably about one to three or something like that. One to three, maybe one to four. What is it? One to eight or something here? I, I, it, it doesn't make any sense. All time main level. He's, grass cur stats. No, he's currently he's currently one to twenty short. He's minus two thousand with Ben oh, that's Rivers. That's even worse than I mean. It's now it's now, it's now plus ten fifty for Quan. Yeah, it's, it doesn't make it's any sense. It's eight and a half, eight and a half game underdog, and thirty and a half total. Yeah, it, it's not, it's not right. This Rune, okay, you made the quarterfinals last year. If that's what you did, I, I don't recall to be honest. But his stats are they're not, they're not, they're no better than whole Casper uh, Rude's service points one and return points one total of a hundred, and a service hold and break total of a hundred. Um, that's exactly the same as Chris Eubanks' stats that I just that I just read out. That's all time main level on grass. You know, it's all right, but it's not it's not a one to twenty favorite. Quan is on ninety seven and ninety seven, so slightly down, but not not that far down. 
you also got to think Quan's taken sets off Novak Djokovic and Karen Kashanov at Wimbledon. He's a former semi finalist at Eastbourne on the grass. The main issue with him is that he's had a ton of injury problems over the last 12 months. When he showed what he can do, it reminded people, should I say, what he can do when he's fit. Uh, was it Roland Garros when he beat Rusevori in straight sets? Absolutely dismissed him. And then he played Corder and only scored five points fewer than Corder in that match. All right, Corder won it 3 1, but it was very, very close in terms of the stats. As I said, Corder only won five more points in that match than than Quan did. And Quan's not a, a clay man by any stretch of the imagination. The issue with Quan is that on this occasion is that he was playing at ITF doubles a couple of weeks ago and he slipped on a ball and rolled his ankle, um, which is why he didn't play any pre Wimbledon grass court tournaments because normally he would have played Eastbourne or, or whatever he could get into. Um, but a couple of weeks ago, as I said, he, he sort of slipped on the ball. But I'm, I'm hearing, I'm told that he's he's fit now. Um, the head-to-head is 2-0 to him. I mean, he even beat Rune on clay um, in the Marbella Challenger as a 3.79 chance, a plus 279. Um, he was that day, Quan, when he beat, when he beat uh, a Holger Rune. But there is a caveat to the Australian Open um, five-setter that, uh, that Quan won. Rune had one of his cramps that day. Really early as well. It was after about two sets, I think, two or three sets. So the last two sets of that were he couldn't move really, uh, Holger Rune. So that was an easy win for Quan based on an opponent that you know did have the upper hand, then struggled with his fitness. So that Australian Open one is a little bit misleading. But even so, from Quan's point of view, he's coming in here. He's beaten this guy twice before. He knows he can play well on grass, taking sets off Djokovic, you know, at Wimbledon. If he can do that, I don't see any reason why he can't take a set at least um, off Holger Rune or at least take it over that really low total that you just mentioned, 30 and a half games at even money. That's, that that's just seems... That, that's, I mean, that, the, the, the odds here suggest that people think he's injured and they're looking in the injury. I mean, you, you said from your sources that you, you've heard that he, he's not as injured as that. But that looks this like was weeks ago. This was, like, this was a couple of weeks ago he, he did that. He slipped on that ball and just rolled his ankle a little bit. Um I think it's at this price, I still think it's worth the gamble because the bookies are saying here that Rune's going to crush him. I, I, no. I, I'm not sure he will. He'll probably win, but I can't see him winning that easily. No, I think I think 30 and a half is, is, is a good I think called Quan um, American. I was getting confused with the other Quan. This is the South Korean uh, the, uh, player. So obviously, I said he's not what American. Quan? Quan here. The American one. Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it a Quan who's American? Is it, c- c- the guy I beat John is there at the US Open. He's called Quan as well. Quan, c- 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 anyway. He's something like I that. I can't remember his name, but he, I'll tell you in a minute. And I, um, I'll, th- I'll tell you the guy I, I, thought, I thought he was, but obviously he's not South Korean. I'm, I'm still away. So I'm, I'm doing this off bits of paper. I've got, I've got no graphics and I'm going to do it on my phone. <laughs> so if I make a mistake, I apologize. But anyway, it's, uh, it's, South, it's and definitely South match, Korean. To, yeah, it's, it's definitely South Korean. Uh, Kuhn, is it, what's, I can't, I'm getting, going to get myself in trouble here, but I, I can't remember the name of the guy, but he's American guy, beat Johnny, I'll think of it in a second. Um, okay. Popperin against uh, Mont, uh, it's Monterey, Diego Montero is our yep. final match we're going to discuss. Alex Popperin is minus 295, Montero is plus 225. The spread here is three and a half, Popperin minus 127, Montero even money uh, receiving three and a half, and the total again, high again, 42 and a half. I remember looking at the totals, I really, I, I, when I was doing it working in the spread betting business, I worked it out that if you went under at Wimbledon, even when the courts were fast, blind in every single match for four or five years in the first or second round, you make a substantial amount of money. Because everybody remembers the ones that go high, but no one remembers the ones that are six four six four six four. And it was the average first round uh, was nowhere near this. So anything in the 40s where you think they're overs or 42 and a half, 44 and a half, I reckon if you bet them all under, anything blind... Uh, Forty-two and a half. I think you'll um, or and higher. I think you'll win. I think you're obviously yeah. going to lose into one, but I think I think you'll win. I think forty-two and forty-four first round of Wimbledon is, is crazy. Anyway, uh, Popper in as they've met once before. Popper in won it, and this was a it was a, a long match. Yeah, five seven six four seven six. You would have lost on the over in that one, uh, but this time around, uh, Popper in and Montero coming. Montero's one on one on uh, grass this year. Popper in obviously uh, uh, played Andy Murray uh, at, uh, at Queens Cup. He lost that match in the first set, so first round, losing 2-1. Come through qualifying in Queen's Cup. Um, had a sort of an indifferent year on grass. But he's probably the player who's much more established on the grass court, hence the reason he's the favourite here. Um, what do you think of this one? Well, 
the statistics would would suggest that he's not particularly well established on grass. He should be, given the weapons that he yeah. has, but he hasn't shown it so far. I mean, his record on grass is poor uh, at main level. His record against left-handers, such as Montero, isn't good either. So with those two factors, I'm immediately thinking it's, it's potentially worth opposing Popurin. This one's a bit more of a feel. Um, it's a bit more of an idea than the others. I'm more more confident about the others. But if we look at this, Popurin against left-handers at main level, 8-15 win-loss. That's a 35% win rate. Service points, one in return points, one total of 97 and a hold and break total of 95. So that's some very poor stats and results from Popperin against left-handers. As you said, these two played a, on a hard court in, in winston Sem. You would expect Popperin on a hard court to beat Montero all day long. Montero much prefers the clay. But he, he got lucky, really, um, did Popperin. He just nicked it in a final set tiebreak. Montero had three match points. He led the service points, won and return points, won totals by 104 to 96. He scored more points in the match and lost. So lucky win, really, that one for, for Popperin. Um, and the return stats of that match, this is this is one of the reasons why this line is so high. Um, Popperin won 23% of return points and Montero 27% of return points. I mean, those are like peak John Isner levels of returning. They're worse, in fact, quite a bit worse. Worse than Chris Eubanks, those sort of levels. Now, if we move over to the main level grass records, weirdly, Montero's actually got a slightly higher win rate. Popperin's won just 24% of his main level grass matches. Montero's won 25%. So he edges it by uh, by 1%. Popperin's got slightly better stats. Service points, one every 10 points, one total of 96, which still isn't great. Montero down at 93. So... There's, there's nothing really in the numbers that suggests Popperin is is likely to to walk all over this, and the return points one, which is which is interesting as well, uh, on grass at main level, Popperin thirty one percent of return points won, Montero just twenty seven percent. So this is why this line is so high, because neither of them can return on grass. Um, but Montero is a stubborn guy, you know, big matches he will not, he, he's not going to roll over. He's not the sort of guy that's going to come here and go, oh, it's grass. See you later. That's not him. He was very close against Kashanov. Um, I'm not sure it was, I think it might have been last year. Um, that, that was a while ago, actually. It was Eubanks that was last year. He was pretty close against Eubanks as well, was Montero. He's not the sort of guy that will just roll over because it's grass. It, it, it's got to be either overs here. It's, it's kind of a high line there, so I don't really want to play the overs. I hadn't seen the, the full lines when this came out. Um, maybe set one overs. It's got to be something in that in that area. Uh, some way to get with uh, to get with Montero. I haven't seen the full the full range of prices. I don't think they were quite out, but that's that's where I'd be going in this one. Yeah, I'll see if we've got a set spread. We've got the set of, set one um, totals ten and a half. We've got over at plus one hundred six. Uh, yeah, it's because of these return points. It's, these return points one are so are so low, and the service points one are quite high. It's, it screams overs, but forty two and a half is is quite a high line. I wasn't, mm. I hadn't seen that line when I, when I wrote this, but that's where I'd be going. I mean, maybe just back Montero on the handicap. That That's perhaps the better way to do it. Then he'd probably get plus three and a half, will he? Or something like that. Uh, um, Montero on the handicap, you are looking at game spread. We're looking at three and a half Montero, even money. Yeah. Maybe go with that. Then slight lean on that. This, as I said, it's, it's not quite as confident as the other four, but I think it will be closer than, than the odds have it for sure. Yeah, there are, that's it. They're the five matches we've discussed for round one of Wimbledon and the men's singles. The first match, a rude uh, in action. He is the first match on the, one of the first matches on court on Monday uh, on the first day of the tournament. I haven't so seen the schedule, actually. Done. Well, that's Monday. All the others are Tuesday, it looks as though. So it looks as though all the other four matches will run on to Tuesday. But check out the schedule. I'm, like I say, I'm looking at it here. And it, that would appear, I'm just flicking through it, look up here that Rude and Bolt is the first match on. I'm uh, on Santa Court on Monday. Well, I know you. I was just about to say you can follow Sean on our Instagram and our uh, Twitter account at Because We Win on his adventures at Centre Court on day one at Wimbledon. We'll have his strawberries and cream paying eighteen dollars for. I won't one be doing that. One bit of cream. I will not no, be doing no, that. Take, no, I didn't think you would be doing that. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, you'll be able to follow that there, and also uh, make sure you download the podcast. Betting weekly game bit match throughout the tournament. We'll have you covered on the men's singles and betting weekly WTA. Rory's giving you his picks on the women's singles, and he wants to fade 
very heavily the world number one, Iga Swiatek. Is he right? Is he wrong? We'll find out in the next fortnight. So uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Ben in Weekly Studios on YouTube. A uh, huge amount of content on there on tennis and also soccer. I mentioned at the top of the show, Euro 2024 is really hot enough. Knockout stages are here and every match now will be covered from the end, from now to the end of the tournament on July the 14th, which is also the final of Wimbledon. So that's it. Well, just give us a quick run through, Sean, of your uh, official picks and your leans for day one and day two, and first round for the men's singles at Wimbledon. Okay, let me get scroll back up to it then in that case. Uh, the first one was uh, Alex Bolt to win the opening set against Casper uh, Ruud, plus 175, 2.75, that one. Mattia Bellucci, over 19 and a half player games, uh, minus 115, that's against Ben Shelton. Slightly simpler one here, Quentin Halley's to beat Chris Eubanks, 1.98, minus 102. And the over games, over 30 and a half total games, Rune against Quan. that's with even money. The other one is a lean popular in Montero, Montero plus three and a half games or whatever you can get on that one. Um, I've just Googled the player who beat Johnny's name. It's nothing like Quant. Uh, I have had a senior moment. It was my birthday <laughs> day. I'm 51 years of age. I just had a brain freeze and a Doesn't senior matter. moment. It was Michael Mo. My, Michael Mo. How I got Michael that Mo. mixed up, I, I have no idea. But They're both I, I, very so short cool. surnames. Maybe that's what it yeah, was. Yeah, I know. I, I, I know. I, well, nothing. A baby. I'm just age. That's what it is. He's got get, too much things going on my mind. I can't even. Sometimes I struggle to get the Instagram, the Twitter, and the, and everything else. Actually. It's just getting old. Too much on your mind. Seen a seen a moment. Uh, that's it. Yeah, pretty much. And anyway, I'll be back uh, to on Monday uh, throughout the tournament. Sean will be on Instagram. We'll be back to normal service uh, from our. Holmes giving you the best bets across the tournament here in the fortnight. And then I'll, I'm, on Friday, I'm off to Germany for the European Championships out nice. there. So I'll be covering you the Euros also on the Instagram page. So there'll be myself in Germany uh, covering all the action on Instagram. And Sean will be at Wimbledon. So we've got you covered every angle you look at here throughout what is going to be an epic couple of weeks on the tennis and also on the soccer. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend, Sean. And give Thank Blake a big thumbs up for me. Uh, Thanks, I will. Make sure get, you Polish that medal. Is it the first medal on the on the on the on the mantel He's piece? Got hundreds of them. Bottom? Hundreds oh, of them. Oh, there we go. Here we go. So you have to get in a bigger room. Keep <laughs> the medals going. And uh, good luck with everything. And uh, we'll catch you all again later in the week. Good luck with your bets. Head across the Bet Rivers now. Load of markets. First round of Wimbledon. Uh, specials your way. And remember, watch live and bet live with Bet Rivers. Take care.